Hi there, welcome to TextBot D and um, this session we're going to be talking about um, the command line reference uh, within um, any Linux system but in particular this one today I thought I'd choose an, uh, at my Linux Mint 14 desktop edition. Um, why? I don't know. <laughs> Some people like the uh, graphical user interface on desktops, so I thought I'd uh, make something, it, make it a little bit more familiar for you um, when we start doing some work in the command line uh, interface or terminal. Linux 14, Mint 14, by the way, is a brand new release um, from Linux Mint, and of course, um, you probably already know the Linux Mint is based on Debian Ubuntu. Um, it's just a different front end and they claim uh, <clears throat> a better user experience. Um, makes a difference to me, I do most of my work on command line anyway, so um, the actual uh, look of the desktop matters not. And, and that's what I want to try and get you into basically, um, is to try and play around with the terminal or command line interface, uh, whether you're using PuTTY or the terminal based um, interface within Linux uh, and, and to try and get confident um, with using it and hoping you know what happens if I push this button um, you can't do much damage to your installation and if you if you're that afraid boot up a, a virtual uh, box or um, VMware or something have a virtual machine running so you can do pretty much what you want with it just for learning uh, use it as your lab and that's what we got here today uh, we're going to be using a terminal obviously within the Linux desktop environment um, and I like this terminal anyway because of the pretty colors it's easier to see uh, on on this um, version uh, distribution so this fire away most of us get confused um, what we're supposed to do next with, um, when we boot into the the uh, terminal and it's nothing to be afraid of to be honest like I said you can't really do that much damage not unless you issue something like sudo um, rm minus f star that would be stupid <laughs> but you know some people do uh, it's been done by me. <laughs> I've done it in the past, you know, uh, way back in the day. But we've all done it, I think, some, at some point. Um, however, there's nothing to be afraid of. It will do what you tell it to do. So let's start off and, uh, with a few basic commands. And this is all I'm going to do in this uh, uh, session, is just go through a few basic commands to get you up and started. Uh, st started with um, Ubuntu, Linux, or... Um, whatever distro you're using. So, say we want a list. We're in the home directory at the moment. How do I know we're in the home directory? What we need to do is we issue a command called pwd. It's print working directory. It's hit enter and it tells me there you go. I'm in the home directory under my user folder teach. So I know I'm here. And this goes, goes for you know whatever folder you're working from whether it's etc usr or dev or, or anything you know um it's a handy little tool and um, most of us uh linux admins we use this a lot because when you're going from folder to folder to folder sometimes you might lose a little bit of track of where you are and it's very easy just to say double check i want to make sure i'm in the right directory so i issue pwd and there I am. I know where I am. So, what if I want to know what what's in my directory? I can't see anything at the moment. So we hit ls. ls brings up everything in the directory. Now, in the home directory presently, we don't have any files listed. Uh, though there may be files in there, but we can't see them. Uh, and it shows we got what one two three four five six seven eight nine folders doesn't seem a lot of folders in the home directory does it there's another another uh, little command we can issue to see what may be hidden 
It's easy to do this with point and click, but it's even easier to do it on the command line interface, trust me. And you get more information as well. So let's go for ls minus al. Beautiful command this is, I love it. Um, I won't get too excited about it though, uh, just you know, in case people think I'm weird. So, what we've got here, um, everything that proceeds with a dot or a point or a period, whatever you want to call it, it's a hidden file or folder. Uh, we've got gconf. Uh, so, as you can see, they're like dot Mozilla that relates to the the standard Firefox uh, installation that comes with um, any Debian Ubuntu uh, distribution. And you've got uh, your dot profile stands for itself. It's the profile that you're working under. Um, yeah, and your bash history. Bash history is what you're typing. It keeps your history in that in that file. So when I hit arrow up, for example, arrow up twice maybe, um, it's recorded my bash history. So it knows what I've used before in this session. Okay, so there you go. Simple as that. Now to clear the screen, um, you can do one or two things. You can either type clear, or what I like to do, because it's very easy, press Control and then L, which clears the screen. So a very, very quick and easy uh, command there. So we're in the home directory. We don't want to work from the home directory. We need to edit some files. Let's say what in the etc folder, which is the most common place to edit files, because that's where all the configuration files are. So what do we do? We go cd, which is change directory. Um, forward slash, because we're going back to the root, um, etc, and I hit the tab key just to um, finish off that command, because there's nothing else called etc uh, folder in the root. So. There you go, press enter. I'm now in the etc folder. But am I? Where am I? Let's do that again. PWD. There you go. I'm in the etc folder. So, they are some very basic commands to start with. So, I'm in the folder. Oh, again, I want to see what's in the folder. So, press ls. We've got a lot more files and folders here. This is the one where you need to be careful. By the way, you've got a little bit of a safeguard. I'll give you an example. If I type in rm minus f, uh, let's go for group. Okay. Hit enter. Won't let me do it. Hmm. Why won't it let me do it then? because I'm not in my home folder anymore. I don't have exclusive rights to write, edit, delete files. I don't have any rights, so I need to elevate my commands. So I'm not going to delete the group folder because that would be stupid. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to create another folder. I'll just create a folder using the command make sudo. We have to ele elevate the command sudo is telling it right I've got root permissions now um, do what I say essentially and that's it so sudo uh, make dir so make directory uh, we call it teach shall we teach oh it wants a password because I'm using an elevated command so t there you go hopefully we have Oops. Hopefully we have a folder called Oh sorry, that's my fault. <laughs> LS. Got carried away with myself there. Hopefully we have a folder called Teach. As you can see up there, that's the folder. Perfect. Let's go into that folder. Okay, because we're already in Teach's root folder, which is ETC. Excuse my um, terminology sometimes if I go off on a tangent. Because we're already in there, we just issue TD, cd and then teach no forward slash this time. And finish off that command with a tab. 
which you can use in just about every case the tab key it just finishes off the words on the screen either whether it's a command or it's a folder name as long as there are no other other folders or commands um, it will pretty much autocomplete for you okay so we're now in teach excellent so let's have a look in teach shall we see what's in there hmm, nothing any hidden files oops it would help if I hit the right command nope nothing in there completely empty okay that's great so we've got a fresh canvas here so what do I want to do now I want to create myself a file I've got an empty folder what's the point of having an empty folder there isn't <laughs> sometimes okay so let's create a file shall we there's two ways you can do this um, you can use uh, touch which basically creates an empty file or updates an, a file or you can use uh, the start of one of the um, editor commands for example if you use a desktop environment you might want to use get it if you're sort of kind of apprehensive about using command line inter interface you, some people use get it because it's that's G uh, GUI isn't it so um, so we or we could use MVI we could use uh, Pico we could use nano I like to use nano it's just my preference it's easy to use and it's very simple to uh, to navigate around um, so we're going to use nano to create our file so first of all in fact I'll take one step back this use touch to create my file I'm going to type, type in touch and then um, I want to call the file text spot. Now watch what happens now. Won't let me do it. Again, we need to give it an elevated command because we are out of our home folder. We don't have exclusive rights. So it's again sudo touch text spot. If I hit ls, there it is, text spot. I want to remove that now. So again, sudo because it's an elevated command, remove I'm going to force the remove just in case. Oops, carried away myself there. LS, there you go, it's gone. And clear the screen with Control L. So let's do it the other way around now and use it with a, um, a text editor command. So, uh, sudo nano, oops, nano text bot beautiful empty file this should, this is my file hello teach you can edit me oops can edit me if you like but remember to use sudo okay so that's all the information we've put into this file it's just a text file it's nothing nothing um too major uh, so i just press control x now i'll press control c for a second there's two ways you can do things here if you want to finish if you want to uh, save your information and carry on editing just in case you can press control O file name to write text what yes please is written so it's saved there already or if you want finished editing you press control X and you come out you would press control X then Y then enter if you hadn't saved it prior okay okay so let's list that hmm text spot it's a bit ambiguous really just text spot text spot what what type of file is it I don't know is it a configuration file is it an XML is it a text this is supposed to be a text file so what am I how can I make that change then how can I make it a text file 
we use a command, believe it or not, we don't use a rename command as such in the command line interface. We use the move commands to um, rename our files. I'll give you an example here. Remember we need to use sudo and then this move is mv, short for move, okay? So text bot and then I want to call it tech then the file you want to call it, which is text bot dot txt. Okay, that looks okay to me. Press enter, hit ls to list uh, the files again, or folders, or directories, whatever you want to call them. And there you go, textbot.txt. Okay, w what if I want to make a file pretty much exactly the same as textbot um, within the contents, but I just want to change one change one parameter and that's it. I don't want to keep typing everything out again. So what I'm going to do is use a copy command now and call it something else. So what we do, we need to use sudo again, of course. Textbot. Oops, textbot. Te sudo what? Sudo cp for copy. Textbot. Doc text. And what do I want to call it? Textbot. Uh, let's call it alpha dot txt hit ls again and there we have our two files one a complete duplicate of the other okay so I haven't worked on textbot dot txt for a long long time now and I've forgotten what's inside it so without actually editing the file you can use a command to see the contents of the file. Okay, this one is the most commonly used one and I'll use, show you this one first. Um, it's called cat, okay? And you enter the file name, textbot. I'll put a period there and hit enter because if I hit a dash it would give me alpha. So if I use a period it will give me txt only. Okay, uh, and hit enter and there you go there's the contents of the file now there's a problem with this because what if your file has got over 500 lines or anything large like that for example or even 100 lines you're not going to want to just hit cat because it's just going to scroll through the whole damn thing and you're going to get to the bottom and you say, well, what was in it? <laughs> I don't know. So, we can do this. We can go cat, more uh, vertical line, and then more. Yeah, by the way, it's always a good idea to tell the system what file you want to cat, yeah? <laughs> so we go to cat, take spot, dot txt of course let's do that again shall we now of course this folder this file hasn't got a lot of lines so it won't give us the desired results that's just to show you though that the command you can use if you wish okay um, is the vertical line and more it'll basically paginate your file for you so when it gets to the bo uh, bottom of your screen it'll just say more and then you hit enter to keep going down each line okay simple as that okay that's great so um, there's another two commands now these two commands generally uh, from memory we use these for um, debugging okay first one I want to go through is head this gives you the top 10 lines of your file outputs the top 10 lines of your file so we hit head textbot dot txt um, and hit enter and see what happens obviously there's less than 10 but you get the point that gives you the top 10 uh, top first 10 lines of your file rubber okay so what if I want to know what the bottom 10 lines are have you guessed it? It's tail. Head and tail. How simple is that, eh? Head and tail. Okay, so tail. And uh, we'll go to text spot again. 
Oh, and there we go. It's the bottom ten lines as well. Now, if you're um, running a, an application and you want to debug it on the fly, um, we use a tail command with a minus and an F. Oops, an F command. What does this do? Basically, every line that's entered into your log that you're trying to debug it scrolls up so it, it adds a new line the text scrolls up, adds a new line, text scrolls up so it continuously grows starting with the last ten lines um, you won't see the desired effect here, the only thing you will do will see is you won't see the command prompt uh, when I hit enter because it's waiting for more data to be added to the file, okay? So if I go text spot period again. There you go, I hit enter. There we go. See it's the cursor's blinking. It's saying okay, I'm waiting for the next uh next thing to be appended to this file. It's not gonna happen on this uh, tutorial, so I'll just hit control C and that will take me back to the start. Okay. Control L to um bring that up. Okay, great. So um what pro bit of process management here within the, a Windows environment it's easy to go and see what the processes are, isn't it? Um you just you just uh, hit uh, control delete and go to task manager or something like that. You don't have to do that here. Um and it's not that hard to be honest to see all the processes and I'll show you why. I we got a nice little command here called top. You hit top and press enter. Beautiful. It's pretty much the same layout as you would get under Task Manager in Windows. Um, it's live. It's on, it's um, it's running real time, and it shows you exactly what you're using. No problems at all. So that's great. Um, I love that command, and this is one of the reasons why I use the CLI a lot. Okay, so if you wanted to kill a certain process, you use the PID um, item here. If you can see that at the top there, PID. You need to locate that PID, okay? And then what you do is you type in um, kill and then the PID number. And that's it. Be careful which one you kill because <laughs> You kill the wrong one, crash the system, or reboot the system. Don't just kill anything, any idle num uh, process. Usually, as you can see the top, it's usually the processes in the higher number, and they've got the user teach on them, for example. Because uh, I'm using a GNOME terminal, it's saying two two nine zero. If I hit, hit kill two two nine zero, it will close down this terminal. So let's do that. See what it looks like. Oh, it's gone. There we go. So the proof is in the pudding, as I like to say. So let's open my terminal back up again. Bring it back down. I like to expand the box a little. It's always handy you can do that with these. Okay, great. So, um, what else do we want to do? Let's go and do some file permissions. This is a favourite of mine, really. I'm going to go back into the um, etc teach folder. Now I don't need to, I can do it this way, I don't need to um, just type in change directory etc then go change directory teach. I can do this cd etc autocomplete press the tab key teach press enter here I am. Let's just make sure I'm in here. We know we are but just to reiterate the use of the PWD again. I'm here. Okay, so um, let's see what files we've got in here. We've got two files. Okay, let's have a look at the permissions of these files, shall we? Uh, we use ls minus al. Let's just check out what the permissions are. Hmm. Okay, so we've got um, no execute, rewrite. Uh, no execute again, read only, 
no execute sorry yeah and uh, no write no execute read and write no execute ah, interesting rather so let's do that again so it's the first part of it is D usually it's here uh, you see it says D on the ones above rather that's to indicate that they are directories and not files okay as you can see these are files they haven't got a D there they don't proceed with the D so we've got read write for, by the person that's created it that's the owner and we have it's not an executable file so there's no X there and then everyone else here they can only read that's fine that's no problem so let's what can we do to change that hmm okay let's try this shall we I want to make this I want to make textbot dot txt writable readable and executable by all be careful with this command and this uh, parameter because it can mess a lot of things up for you in the future so be careful what you need to make rewrite to all and executable to all just going to demonstrate it anyway we need to use sudo okay so I need to elevate the command again so sudo chmod chmod and then we go for uh, 777 that's telling me 777 is telling me read write execute by all okay and we want to tell it what file to do textbot.e.txt beautiful wants another password as long as you don't mind putting in passwords sudo is great to use uh, some people go into the um, into root and use the system as a root only only use root if you're confident and capable I would say and careful uh, sudo kind of gives you that uh, little bit of protection because you have to think about what you're doing when you're into sudo if that makes sense okay so this ls now this file should be a different color Okay, it's textbot.txt. There we go. It's executable. So it's got ls minus al again. There we go. As you can see, it's no d of course because it's not a directory. So it's rwx, rwx, rwx for everybody. Okay, so what if I want to change that? Let's say I have it for read, write, executable for the owner. Um, read execute for the group maybe and let's do that for the world as well I think yeah why not so let's go for sudo I want to change the file permissions again it's not my folder or file so I have to elevate the command so sudo chmod um, 755 this time so 7 let's break this down a little bit so 7 is read uh, sorry read write executable that's the owner part this is the group part read executable only read executable only for the world forever and text what txt presenter beautiful and there we go it's still green because it's executable remember okay so go ls minus al now as you can see there it's only rwx for the owner um, r and x for the group um, r and x for other or the world very simple commands there now what if I want to change the ownership of the file so I want to see hit uh, ch um, own so it's change ownership let's uh, do that quickly let's change the ownership to teach which is the user okay again be very careful when you go changing ownerships of files especially system files because uh, Linux, Linux just doesn't like it um, on certain certain files okay it needs to be the root as the owner 
Okay, this so we go. Here we go. Pseudo. C H O. Chris. Carried away on myself then. Teach. And then teach again. Oops. And then the file. Okay. Okay, press enter, ls minus al. As you can see there, group and owner is uh, teach teach. Great. Okay, perfect. Now with that changed, that's that's done something. I want to modify textbot um, dot txt to textbot dot sh. Which what I do. So remember to rename something's move, okay? So it's M MV textbot dot txt to textbot dot sh. There you go. Permission denied. Got to remember to hit sudo, okay? Oh. Okie dokie. There we go. Ls. Lo and behold, textbot.sh. Okay, great. Okay, I'm just going to fire through um, some very, very quick system info commands. Um, I may do some. Uh, yeah, I'll do a couple of. Maybe do a compression command. And a net, yeah, we'll do a network command as well. So let's do some. Fire through some very quick uh, system info commands. And a lot of people forget these, to be honest. Um, First one, <laughs> easiest one of all, date. Hit date. Beautiful, brings up the date. An old one, which a lot of us do forget, is Cal. Look at that. It's got a calendar. <laughs> who who would have thought, eh? Yeah, so you don't need no fancy calendars installed on your system. You've got one here. It's fully functional. All right, it's not pretty colours, but it works. And that's the most important thing, it works. Okay, let's show how long we've been up and running. Uptime. Beautiful. It gives you the load averages as well during the period, so which is great. Um we've been up and running since hmm. then. <laughs> so perfect. Okay, what else? Let's say we're using a multi environment system or something, and we've got lots of people logging in for example so uh this is a server okay what do we want? we want to know who's online don't we so you hit w and it says ah there we go w tells us who's online um great okay so it's just me um fantastic you could have a number of people in uh, in logged logged in or whatever what if you are logging into a system and you when you log into a system you've got different rights uh, for different levels of login okay and occasionally you log in as the admin occasionally you log in as a developer or user and you sometimes you as you've been working for such a long time you're forgetting what who you are so you say you simply say to the system you say who am I that's it who am I and he says Hey, you teach. I say he. I'm not trying to be sexist here. <laughs> he could be he or she. Okay, so there you go. It says, who am I? Um, now, there's another command. Um, it's called finger. By default, this isn't installed. Um, so you have to uh, drag it down from the repository or something like that. Um, use, And I'll show you how to do that in a second. Um, so we can do finger and then teach. Finger tells, gives me information about me, okay, the person that is logged in at the time. It tells them what directory they're in. Well, sorry, let's go from the top. The login name is teach. The name is teach rather. Um, directory I'm in at the moment. I'm my home directory rather. So not I'm in my home directory is home and teach. What shell am I using? I'm using bash. 
there are various others but we won't go into that at the moment that I might use that on a different uh, short tutorial or something and um, how long I've been logged in exactly etc etc and, and other little bits of information okay so that's it we'll leave that one for the moment um, let's press control L clear the screen uh, I love an, another great one I like to use is um, man now this one can save you a lot of bother because you just, on the forums Ubuntu forums for example you all see people saying oh how do you do this how do you do that start from scratch at your system before you ask people questions you've got the information is there if you look for it that's why we the uh, developers and contributors have built these manuals they're there to help you so man how do you use sudo what's sudo for so I go man sudo and there you go that's the maintenance command okay for sudo and the sudo is it's all there everything you need is there though to some people it may be ambiguous next step would be to use your favorite search browser a uh, search engine mine and pretty much everybody else's is Google <coughs> did I see Google Google yeah it's Google so use that um, you will learn more by searching for the information for yourself first before you just ask somebody somebody for a quick fix for example and you can use that man for anything for example I've got um, I've got finger installed okay as I just showed you um, I've typed in man finger and it gives me all the options for the different switches to use with finger um, etc etc and you can scroll through that if you're bored and there we go, man, beautiful command. Okay, another one. Um, you want to interrogate your network? You use if config to look at this is to look at your interfaces. Okay, um, as you can see there, we've got ETH0 and a loopback address. Various pieces of information here, which we'll, I'll cover again on the network uh, instruct uh, tutorial in the future. Um, you want to make sure your network's working. We just simply hit you ping. Oops. Google, and we should get a return there. Brilliant, beautiful. Control L to um, clear the screen again. Okay, and um, a bit of very small, re uh, small amount of revision for installation and removal various options you can use okay as you know I've got finger installed okay I want to remove that so I issue sudo and then apps get remove finger as you can see it's removing finger for me I press Y to say yep yeah, please remove it get rid of it I don't want it anymore I'll just wait for that to complete There we go, it's gone. So if I go to finger, let's say teach again, it's not installed. So please install it. We're going to do that. We're going to so it's a similar install, it's similar command. Okay, it's commands for installation or removal are great because they're so similar. So sudo apt get in. Oops, whoa, go back again. Get install. Finger. Beautiful. It's installed it. So um, that's it, really. Um, I think we'll leave it at that. We won't bother doing compression in this um, tutorial because I think I will concentrate on uh, compression in depth because it's quite a quite a nice little top topic that. Um, if you've got any comments, um, please uh, feel free to leave them at the bottom or visit my website at uh, techspotde.com um, and please subscribe to my channel and thank you for watching. Goodbye.